In this video, we'll go through the process of how you can put a plane image into your Blender scene and then map a two-dimensional picture to that and then manipulate it and move it around just like you would in many 2D applications that let you animate things in 2D but with the added advantage being that it's in Blender, Blender is free, you can have a lot of flexibility in how you want to move and change the image around if you want to animate it or even just make a slideshow with a number of different planes that you map images to. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the cube in our current scene. Easy way to do that is move over the cube, hit the X key, click to confirm delete, and now we want to add a plane to our scene. So we're going to hold the shift key, then the A key on the keyboard, and we're going to add a plane to our scene. And I'm going to bring up the display for numbers and numerics by hitting the N key. See, N turns it off, N turns it on. And what I want to do is I want to set the dimensions to be 16 on the X, by 9 on the Y. And the reason for that is I want the aspect ratio of the geometry of this mesh object to match the aspect ratio in pixels that my image has. That way I won't introduce any distortion to the way the image displays. So I have a plane and in order to get an, a texture to show up on it I have to go through a few steps. I need to add a material to this. So I'm going up here I'll click on material, I will say new, and the only thing I'm going to do is switch the preview render to be the plane style, and I'm going to click on this item next to shadeless. So the shadeless is selected, and what that will do is render the image without any lighting effects, without any ray tracing. It's uh, not only very fast for the computer to render because it doesn't go through the ray tracing process, it just doesn't add any light or reflections to it. It just draws the image the way the image has the natural color of its pixels, which is usually what you want. If you don't turn shadeless on, you might get a glossy look, you might get a, a look that you'll have to do a lot of playing around with lighting and so on to get it to not look funny. Just checking shadeless gets rid of all those problems. So then the next thing that we need to do is go to the item where we can add textures on the menu. So first we had to add a material, then we're going to add a texture. We say we want a new texture, and you have all these different types to choose from. We want the one that says image or movie. So we select that, and then we have to open, because we don't have one already in here, we're going to open a bitmap file. I'm going to just navigate over to my desktop, and go into this directory and I'll pull up this image which is a higher resolution one and this is the image that I want to see mapped onto this but in order for that to happen I have to tell it that I want to attach this image to the geometric points that I define in here so that the image will display one other thing to note is if you're not used to Blender these are the different ways that you can view what an object in Blender will display. Either just a bounding box, a wireframe, solid. What you want is texture in this case. And so when we actually do map the texture in, it will show up and we can see it from this view. Okay, so what we have to do next is actually do the mapping. There is one other step that I don't want to forget. And that is under the mapping coordinates, I want to choose UV because we're going to define the UV. That's just a way to describe how the X and Y two-dimensional image gets wrapped over or attached to points in the 3D space. So you do have to have the coordinates set to UV. Then we'll go up here to where we have these predefined layouts. And this is the easiest way to get here. You can just go to UV editing. And they set it up so that, I'm just using my scroll wheel to zoom out here. They have it set up, so if I turn the texture view on here, so that I can easily UV map a texture to this geometry and then see it over here or attach a file to it. And the steps to do that are you have to right click on the object that you want to add the texture to, and this is the easiest possible case. We just have a plane 
that's just a couple of triangles. So I'm going to hit the tab key and then I'm going to hit U for unwrap. Just remember tab to get into edit mode, U to unwrap. So I unwrap it and it's going to automatically figure this out because there's nothing complicated about it. You have to mark seams and do a bit more work if you're trying to take something that looks like a human face or an animal or something. You actually have to help it figure out where those, scenes, uh, those seams ought to go. But for a 2D plane like this, it's very, very simple and straightforward. So what I'm going to do now is go down to the bottom and actually choose the uh, texture that I loaded in before. So I choose that and whoa, look at that, everything changes. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and this is showing how those coordinates are going to map to the image. And because I scaled this to be 16.9, which is the aspect ratio of the image, I get this to look exactly the, the size and aspect ratio of to match. The width and height are exactly the same as my original. Now the only thing I might want to do is rotate this texture around so this isn't upside down because eventually we're going to move our camera so that it can look at this image before we render because we're going to render what this camera sees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all these points highlighted and if you don't have them highlighted you can hit A to deselect them and A to select all of them when your pointer is over here and I hit the R key to rotate and I'm going to rotate and hold down control so I can snap those points much more precisely and I'm just going to look at where my image matches up uh, to the right direction that I want so I'm gonna nudge it around and that's closer Then I left click and that locks it in to that view so as you can see we have a texture applied to this plane and we're going to go back now to our default view and what we're doing now is we're going to make the camera point to this in a, with a method that takes a few clicks, but it's a good way to understand how you can reset the positions and rotations of things. If I right click, I'm going to click on this triangle part of the camera because it's the easiest thing to grab. I'm going to right click it, but I need to hit tab because I was actually in edit mode. So when I hit tab, I'm now back in object mode. And so make sure you don't see those little handles glowing on the corners. See, that's with object mode. I hit tab again, and I'm back here. So I right click, and it turns orange when it's selected. And what I'm going to do is clear its position and rotation. So it's going to go right to the middle of the, the view here and point to the origin point with no rotation in the camera. So what I'll do is I'll first clear its rotation by hitting the Option key, then hitting R. That clears its rotation. If I hit Option, then G, it actually moved the camera to the middle of the world, and that's where I can start to position the camera so it's looking exactly orthogonally to the plane, exactly parallel, uh, sorry, perpendicular to the plane on the ground, so I don't introduce any distortion because it's not exactly lined up. Then I'm going to click on this blue arrow, which is a selector that lets me move on the z-axis. I'm going to drag it up a bit. I'm going to move my mouse wheel out here and zoom up a little bit more. And then when I get over it a good distance, I'm going to hit my zero key again. And by hitting zero on the number pad, that's on the number pad. If I hit it once, it shows me the scene a view of my 3D environment that I was just looking at. If I hit zero again, it shows me what the camera is seeing. And this framed area is actually what the camera sees. What I want it to see is the rest of this. So what I need to do is either I can hit zero, zoom out, and just kind of nudge this up some by hitting the selector and going back here. Or I can just translate on the Z axis by hitting G and Z and then just kind of moving things until they look like they line up pretty well. So G lets me translate on the axis that I choose. If I hit G, then X, Y, or Z, I can choose the axis I want to move along. So by hitting G, then Z on my keyboard, it locks me into viewing things just on the Z plane, and I can get everything lined up just so that when I left click, everything will show up the way I want it to. 
So I now have this showing up uh, in the way that I want it to render, but let's look at what happens when I render now. I'll click on my camera, click on image, and it shows up. The reason it shows up, I'm going to hit escape, the reason it shows up is because I defined on the object, I defined the material, and the material's using a texture that I loaded in and told it to use the UV. If you don't say UV, you're not going to get what you want. So you have to make sure you get all of those steps. So those are the essential steps for bringing a 2D image into Blender so that you can work with it in 3D space. I hope you found this useful and by all means, happy blending.